Okay, uh, please stand and we're going to bless the food. Salana Salana Lagung, Salana Iwangung, Tawai Sung La Ant Unkilt Lagung. Hall tlai eis u angata lagang, sabli gai eat dang is gun. Aya sung dangant kilt lagang, how a salana. Amen. Okay, can I have the youth come up and um, go in line and serve the elders, please? Angun, could you come help serve the elders? And Goon and Juno Youth, please come up and help serve the elders. Thank you. All youth ambassadors. I know there's a few Anchorage youth ambassadors here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Hello. Um, we, Gold Belt is sponsoring the dinner and if the, all the elders are served, everybody else could get in line and, and help themselves. Um, we would like to thank everyone that came for for our round table and also this evening's, this evening's activities. And shortly we were, we're gonna um, do a few, a few ceremonies, but first we'd just like to say thank you and, and we appreciate all of you guys that came here to support the youth ambassadors and the elders round table. Katsu Kunachish Yeo to Sakai had to ask you to think it a cake way. Chitkai <laughs> I would like to thank the youth ambassadors for serving the elders and also the Angoon youth ambassadors are here also for this uh, the round table and the gathering where having the next few days. Here's Linda, she has some. Yucky, goodness, cheesh. Um, my name's Linda Carroll. Uh, I work for Goldbot Heritage Foundation. Um, it's been a wonderful day. I, I hear all the love, I hear all the peace. We get to share a wonderful meal with one another. I also want to th extend my appreciation to our youth who've really stepped up to help serve and help keep things in order and have that positive um, guidance that has been spoken today. 
Um, I also want to share that I have my grandson, who's a former youth ambassador. He's moved out of ambassador stage into our SAMHSA grant. And um, the flute mu music that you hear always brings peace to my heart. So when we eat wonderful food together and hear wonderful music, it helps our digestion, eh? So anyways, um, our director, Dion Cadiente, will be here shortly. Um, enjoy your meal. Um, we have a lot of food and a lot of empty tables. So if you'd like to join us at the tables, please um, come on over to the tables if you'd like to have a plate of food with us. Um, once again, um, we do have people switching places, so um, my name is Marsha Hotch. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> We just want to thank the for the those that um, gave us a wonderful meal. It was a wonderful meal. Atlain Gunal Chish and um, <clears throat> I'm here to introduce Kone. I know him as Kone. Oh. <laughs> and I met this young man probably 20 some years ago. Plus, yeah. Uh, yeah. We were both working in something different. We were working for our environmental programs for our tribes. And we had our first Southeast Environmental Conference in Tlaquan. And this is where I met him. And um, so we go way back there. But I've also watched him change direction and took what he'd gained and started stepping up and learning Tlingit language all on his own. <laughs> Studied it, took it apart, put it back together, and took it apart again and put it back together because that's pretty much if you're sitting on your own. That's pretty much what you have to do. So um, it's an honor to have him with us and to share with us. And as Tlingit people, we are very proud of his accomplishments. He's also the <clears throat> professor um, at the university, teaches Tlingit language and um, does so too. And he's worked very hard at these past few years. He has gotten his doctorate from the University of Hawaii. Right? And so, Atlain Gunilchish, Dr. Lance Twitchell. Kone. Yake Hawe Atlin can achieve Shoe Yersatini Kunahawe Ya Ak Kwan Wush Kitan on a cocoa ye Jahanin Kayohan Sutli Nadi Yachte Tan 
Taku Kwan Yohan Suach to us a gooey of Satini Yakani Yan Yan Yedi. If the cut has a do so, Yak Aya Yenesi cut Ayasa ah Ya and yet Kusani Awa has co our Ak Kwan cut Aku Kwan. Was a ach to yak eh? Can a scene of Waha yuk a tongue? Ako ach to us a go. Ye yak saka ye go ayak one. The cut has a do sa ha yuk a tongue ye in ye jene ye who to saku. She at the haini ah, think it rain a yuk at la atki, and a casu art. Konachoe has to dart you to Hotan Nuch. Ya are silk, Kayoch nay. Ya are sunny, Hoi nak. She at the haini ark, so I do sa hajitas our tea has to at was cool. Wasa are two yak eh. Ye are a hosatin, so she at the haini thing it co at the two wook yak. Gunner cheese. Had the chunk yan. A data ya. You two ye sa arti. Wasa ye ke away a day. Has you chee day ye tea ye ha you katangi ha ha kosi. Cast the cut you han, quasi to was a go ha you katangi ye shagugu. Ye quati. Ye quati. Hosatina we a cock plain tail to ease. Kaidi hina ya we ku eek a khuni a khani de ku eek e awa du eesh has kone has awa she has de kah de she ye kidzi kone awa el ti eesh ke awa eek yende ya ya nai duck yende ya ya nai duck ye awa a dot you to hotan ha you a tongue dot. Kusahan in ye got to dark the cut you hon. Was I ye care away hush kasnik eh? Ha a cheek eh? Ha kusti ye. Kaka away ye got to satin ha you a tongue ye tin. Kashi got to dark chako do a tongue ye in. A chawe ach to ye care your satini. Hosaku was a teak day ye ye ya ach the chun kin gaze te tuck away ach to was a cook of eight a yees ach he was a yak away a yuk a tongue ye the cut you han Hosaku was a teak day ye 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 chakay claw yuk air away of satini ya can call the neek Ya ach kak, gunnel cheese. Ya the cut your hand so I do sa, kak a shot. Ya a watch, oh ya, it ji duck, it who would duck a ya ka e would touch the two ye dat. Ya we were at your high ach to us a good ye satin, ya hana. Question card a sink it in a hutla at key. Has a ya on K has oo what ha yuk a tongue ye awa wasa ach in ye awa ka das the ya ye took the at ye to uchun sing it a ya would to wach a jaway would to saku ha yuk a tongue ye awa ha to was a good so wa got gain suck she. Say you took a near could the teacher think it enough to eat to cook yak de away yaker quatty. Car knock away her in a cow and nick with took a knee. It was a goo your tongue aus aus a goo car aus a coo. Shook what I had to cook yak the way so yat a yak. Cook chunk, cook chunk. Ye awa to tuck a wicker to a ark. Tusha on tin kakusahan. Ha da ye has good quati, has he go has. Could the day know where our day? Ya has yonder hun ye. 
Guk chunk. Guk. What to saku ya kaki glock? Had the chunk isani, yes. Chaikhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoekhoek
We're just going to have fun. We're just going to love each other. We're just going to be respectful with each other. I think if we, if we all used Klingit a lot more, it would be a lot harder to talk negatively about each other. And I think we can make some shifts. If we notice that we're starting to talk bad about somebody, let's just stop ourselves. And we don't have to be ugly about it. We could just say, Klingit. Just, just stop. We don't need to hurt each other anymore. So I was taught you do things with love and kindness. You just put those things in your heart. And, and I want to just say, just hang in there. Just be strong. There's this really great part of a raven story uh, told by Ki Tiana Yi where Raven says, I'm going to encourage you, though. You'll be OK. And he talks this owl into doing this thing for him. And it starts to go bad for this little owl. And so here comes the words of encouragement. He says, He says, everything hurts. Just stand there. <laughs> so, I was like, that's some real clinket advice right there. <laughs> but I do want to give you encouragement. Because if you've been working in this language, if you've been around this language, even just casually, you know we're losing a lot of speakers. You know we're in a lot of trouble. I have a feeling that we're, we're turning that corner right now. And I'm going to show you what that, why I think that way. Okay. We're past the point where our language was in a dying state, and it's in a living state. It's in a growing state, and the time is coming when a kid is going to tell me a story in Klingit. That's the day I'm waiting for. And bad jokes, just bad. <laughs> Fun jokes, also bad jokes. I'll tell you guys this, and then we're going to look at some information here. I'm not going to translate everything I said to you, uh, but I did. I wanted to acknowledge a lot of elders, a lot of teachers. I'm sorry if I, if I missed some folks. But just acknowledge those who have taught me and those who are teaching right now. Uh, working in Tlingit is tremendous and wonderful. And it's also never ending. I was like, if you want to never run out of things to wonder about, just come and learn Tlingit. Because <laughs> you'll, you're like, why is that? I'm like, I don't know. That's just how it is. <laughs> it's like when we were sitting down with Nora, we said, well, there's two ways to ask somebody, what are you doing? So how do you know which one to ask? And she said, well, it depends what they're doing. So I was like, so you got to know what they're doing to ask what are you doing? She says, basically. And so I was like, all right, I'll go with that. So uh, in this picture, this was in Yakutat about six years ago. And we had about 10 to 15 birth speakers. And so I, I think about birth speakers, people who were raised speaking Klingit, and they can understand it or speak it at some level. And then around them, there's about 20 different people who are currently teaching right now. And then a lot of people who have been, just been learning Tlingit. And those numbers are growing. And they're growing exponentially. And I want us to come away with two things. One is, it's still pretty scary. And two, it's certainly getting better. And I, I guess the biggest thing is, don't hesitate. Just go for it. Uh, it, it's so much fun to learn this language. You get all the good jokes, including the stuff that's inappropriate dinner table conversation. So I've heard. But there's this part of the Raven story, so I'm going to embarrass my kids here for a second. So when we decided to have kids, my wife Mariah and I, we decided we'd do one parent, one language. And so I, I speak only Tlingit. To my children, I'll speak English around them, but I'll speak Tlingit to them. And there's this part in some of the Raven stories, uh, and if you don't like inappropriate things, plug your ears, where he takes, like in one version, he takes his eyes back, and another version, he takes his nose back from these people. And as he's flying out, they say, which is sort of like, uh, 
a doo-doo butt raven might be the nice way to say it. That's not how Nora usually translated it, but I'll, I'll stick with that translation for now. It's young ears out here. And I had never translated that phrase for my kids. And one time, uh, they've learned that if they say it in Tlingit, that it'll probably happen. I'll eat their broccoli, I'll do whatever, right? And so, one of the, I think she wanted water. And she said, I was um, like, oh, yeah, I got her water. She said, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. She says, Gunnish Chish, Ish. It's like, oh, Tach Kunach Yak E. And she says, Gunnish Chish, Kaitli Ish. That was pretty funny. So, I mean, it was all in Shlinket, so go for it. Okay. So, I was thinking about this stuff last night, and I, I think about Shlinket in sort of these eras. Starting from, and the eras begin uh, when we really got to start thinking about what's going on with Shlingit. For me, they begin right around the 1900s. Up until the 1900s, you probably got 100% of the people who speak Shlingit. 100%. Everybody who's Shlingit speaks Shlingit. If you're here, they expect you to speak Shlingit. There's about 15,000 people at that time. Then from 1900 to 1940, you kind of have this gradual decline. And that decline is due to violence. So a lot of people who were born in the 1920s, uh, those who are still with us, and those who shared information with us, will tell you about a tremendously violent time. And we've documented a lot of horrible stuff that happened to them because they spoke their language. So sometimes when people say, oh yeah, well, these languages just uh, fell out of use, like that's a complete lie. Right? Like the, the amount of violence our people experienced, and some of it was getting hit with a ruler. Some of it was getting picked up by your hair in front of, this, in front of your classmates on the first day of school. Some of them was a chemical, uh, a rag soaked in chemicals and stuffed in people's mouths. Some of it was just humiliation on a day-to-day -day basis. It's horrible. It's happening to little children by teachers who are adults. In the 1940s to the 1960s, you have a, a rapid acceleration in the decline of Tlingit. And this is spurned by an almost universal decision to stop speaking to children. Children who were born in this era and, and after did not have parents who spoke to them. So the guilt and the pain around our languages is very real. It's very real for, for all of us which is why I'm encouraging us to just practice the art of healing, letting go, living healthy as we can, and just using it every day, forgiving each other all the time, giving each other a lot of flexibility, correcting with kindness, uh, and just using it wherever we can. From 1960 to 1980, you have a massive decline. So as, as all these things are realized, the the decision to not speak to kids, which was it needed. You had to do that. You had to. You couldn't go through that kind of torture and then think that your children were going to have a different experience. It was a protection for children. But at the same time, you have really intense language documentation going on. So uh, Constance Nash and Jillian Story are creating their works. Jeff Lear is creating their works. Uh, Nora and Richard Dowenhow are creating their works. Lots of stuff. Clinkett is very well documented. From the 1980s to the 2000s, you have now increased focus on efforts. The development of Sea Alaska Heritage Institute, of, of other uh, heritage organizations, and then just a, an intense effort to try and get it into schools, to, to create learning programs, to start having immersion camps and other things like that. And then you have the development of effective language materials. To teach people think it, it, it's, it's a pretty hard thing to do. Uh, but it's, it's absolutely possible. Anybody who wants to speak Tlingit can. Anybody who wants to can. But I like to tell people, I was like, but if you don't speak it now, you cannot live the same life and expect it to happen. So all you have to do is just change your whole life. You know, whatever. 
But then from 2000 to 2020, you have this rising tide. And so I've been, uh, I've been trying to think about how to uh, document this. And so for about the last 10 years, I've got a little project where I try to keep track of every single person who can speak Clinkit or who's learning it. And it's kind of tricky, but just know I'm watching you. <laughs> so, it sort of like was that thing that was shared. It was like, uh, my husband asked, why am I whispering? And I said, well, I don't want Mark Zuckerberg to hear us. And then he laughed, and then Siri laughed, and then Alexa laughed. Right? <laughs> but I'm just trying to keep track of what's out there. And also, where are people at with their levels? How do we get people to level up? So one of the things I recommend is we try not to say fluent. Are you fluent? Because I, I get asked that. And I I've, I've find myself saying that, too. Oh, yeah, they're a fluent speaker. Because it's sort of like, um, like I'm supposed to whip out like my BAA card and my Clinkett and Haida card and my fluent card. And I think we got to move away from that and just say, oh, yeah, are you a speaker? Yes, I speak it, and I understand it. Just say yes, even if you just know a little bit. That's the part where you grant yourself permission, and you also reject these ideas that someone gets to come in here and put labels on us. But the other part is you got to hold yourself accountable to make sure you're on a path to high fluency. I like fluency better than fluent. So this is what I think things basically look like for birth speakers. Just sort of roughing it out in these eras, looking at these 20-year increments. And you have a, a huge decline. You go from 15,000 speakers, birth speakers, people who grew up from birth speaking, and it's less than 100 now. I think it's probably about 78 by my count. And there, there's probably some folks that I don't know about who are out there. And I would love, I love meeting new speakers. I love talking to people. I love learning. I love using the language. I really love encounters where I'll talk to people. And there was one, she passed away last uh, last year, uh, no, uh, this March. And when I first met her, we got done talking and thinking, and she said, I haven't talked like this since my dad passed away. That was 20 years ago. And this is what it looks like for who's learning Clinkit. And this is the part where we realize it's very scary. My goal is to get us to 1% of all the Clinkit people in the world who could speak their own language. We're, we're not there. We're at about half of a percent, I think, right now. So there's, I think, about 25,000 Clinkit people in the world. And there's probably 70 to 80,000 people who live in our territory. So those numbers even get much smaller. But don't give up, because if you want to zoom way in on this, I think it looks like this. So I don't think we really were making too many speakers up until about the 2000s. I think prior to 2000, as second language speakers, there was maybe four or five of them, maybe, maybe 10 ever. A couple of shopkeepers, uh, Nation Story at one point, Jeff Lear, Richard Dauenhauer. It gets pretty thin, but then all of a sudden you get this boom, this rise where I think there's about 150 people now who have learned it as a second language. So there are more second language learners now than birth speakers. And that could be scary, because the birth speakers are the ones who, who know. I can say a bunch of stuff, but I am not by any means nearly as qualified as people who grew up with this language and can just go off and just speak it. Uh, but And so we're on this. It's exponential growth. And what we've got to do is we've got to get to our first 1,000. Then we've got to get to 1,500, then to 2,000. And there's a lot of things that people are doing that's, that's creating positive change. So then I think about things in, in terms of this. Like, I'm, I don't like fluent. I like fluency. Like, you can basically just pronounce things, and you can memorize things and repeat them. But you can't really get beyond memorization. That puts this, you're at this novice beginner level. Intermediate, you could start to ask your own questions. You could start to, you can follow a lot of conversations. You can fill in the blanks with a lot of things. 
Uh, then you get into advanced, and now you can start talking about yesterday, tomorrow. You could understand most everything you hear and say most everything you want to say. Then above that, you're getting into you can formulate opinions, you can make speeches, you can make stories, you can do a whole bunch of stuff, and you rarely ever get stuck. Although Clinkit has, if you like complicated, Clinkit is for you because there's just there's a bunch of stuff to it, but it's it's not never ending. There's only so much stuff there, and you can learn it all. So I think this is kind of what we look like, and this is a lot of numbers. Uh, the first one is people who are birth speakers and where they currently live, people who are second language learners and where they currently live, and the totals. So I think we're at about 225, which is more than uh, I had counted a year ago. Uh, and I think there's also a bunch of people I don't even know about, too. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to spy on everybody. I'm going to try and strike a deal with uh, Apple and Amazon and all that. But then under fluency, like if you want to just sort of look at where folks' fluency is at, and just sort of, these are estimates, and it's kind of sensitive business, because you got to sort of say, oh, yeah, well, I've, I've talked to them, and, and they, I think they can do this. I think they, they can do that. There's another thing here that's likelihood to speak, because there's some people who can speak, but it's really hard to get them to talk. There's other people that they'll just talk to me all the time in Tlingit, which is wonderful. That's what we need. Uh, and so I think, um, oh, the numbers don't quite match up. I'll have to figure that out. But there's also a bunch of newer learners or folks who are in this novice area that I don't know about yet. And so trying to create a sort of uh, a conversation where it's like, I, I want this to be very clear. There's multiple ways to get to the top of the mountain. But we all need to get to the top of the mountain, and we need to share as many tools as we can on how to get there. We got to just keep talking to each other, figure out where the blanks are, uh, and go from there. So I thought I'd close with some words from two speakers that I worked with a lot and who I loved tremendously and miss dearly. And that's Shakshani, Marge Dudson, and Kahwan Ish, George Davis. Uh, we worked together every single week for about three years. Uh, they were wonderful. We'd just sit in George's house and would translate some really hard stuff. And we'd come up with a bunch of projects. How, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? And the, the thing that I really feel bad about is there's going to be all this stuff that's coming out in the next year or so that they made and that they didn't get to see it before we lost them. But they're still, like, all, a lot of the things that they shared with me are things I shared directly with students. And same with other people. Shkate, Jesse Johnny, Kaja Walter Sobolov. Uh, so many of them, Kharkawu, Cyril George, who, who shared things with me. And, and I, a lot of it was just, I was able to ask them and clink it, like, what do we need to know? What do our grandkids need to know? And they shared some things. So I'll close. Uh, with their words. I'm thankful for the opportunity to speak about our language. Uh, I'm very uh, humbled by the amount of work there is to do and, and the amount of work that everybody is doing. Uh, it's, it's a whole bunch of people doing a whole bunch of amazing stuff. Uh, we still need to get a little bit more coordinated, but that's all coming. So here it is. Really fight for it. Hey, 
Hakasahan, quite take to in a Chish Lance for saying your wonderful words to us and for leading the charge with language preservation. Uh, a few years back, Lance had worked on a consortium among a number of different organizations who were working on language preservation. And he brought us all together, and it was community organizations here in Juneau as well as from other communities in Southeast Alaska. And we talked about how we could work better together. And I believe we need a reminder of that constantly, that we're not alone. We are working together. Um, with that, I, I want to invite up the Juneau School District staff to share the new language policy. We have been working with the Juneau School District a number of years and have, here in Juneau, worked very hard to try and define what would a language pathway look like. And it's a tall order, because here in Juneau, we serve about 1,200 Alaska Native youth. Yet it's a dream that we try to keep our eyes on, that our children deserve to learn their languages in our school and to claim this as our education system. So with that, I, I, I'd like them to share this wonderful new language policy. Dion. As uh, the others come up, I, who said this isn't a kuik? Who said that? Certainly today, as I've been here among you and enjoyed seeing your faces here and being with you today, and again this evening, seeing the faces of those who've crossed over the river of life, hearing their words, hearing Lance speak, Kune speak, encouraging us. He really touched on it that we're tired. We've been on this road for a long time. Many thoughts came to mind, looking at the massive decline starting in the early 1980s. And it brought to mind, and it needs to be said, and said here, that our elders who met in Sitka some of them stepped out. Charlie Joseph, his daughter, was here earlier today. They stepped out and they forged a whole new path. And out of that meeting came the inception of Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation, of who my Shungu KD brother, David Katzik, was the president, the first president of Sea Alaska Heritage. And while that outcome was to address what the elders then saw as our, our state of being right then with the massive decline, the violence that had impacted us as a people, they still stayed the course and said, this is what our children need to know. They need to know who they are. They no longer should walk on their land, ha'ani, as strangers. And that mandate was given 
by them to us and through the leadership of David Katzik, King is Stay. We've been staying the course of that. They are the elders who envisioned the first celebration and brought it to be. So when we get tired, it's a good reminder to see their faces and hear their voices that they had faith in us, that they believe in us. And some of them, like myself, who experienced through my mother's, um, who's here with us and so privileged to be here with us and us with her, who experience the violence of her language being taken from her and her children who picked up that blanket to surround her and lift her up. That's the path that we're on as well. And so I take those words of Kune to heart that we follow our children. So I thank you. I thank you, her younger brother. It should be said, too, that Sea Alaska Heritage Institute that came to follow Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation um, was first set out as a 5013C status to distribute scholarships. And yet, through the vision of uh, David Katzik and, and the trustees, went up on Capitol Hill and lobbied for money to save our language, even back then. So it's been, what, almost 40 years of making good and making actionable what our elders had hoped. And they said, and I was a young woman when they stood up and said this, someday our grandchildren will be shouting out our names. In other words, they'll know who I am. They'll know who they are. They'll know this land that they stand on. And as I stand here, I'm looking on the faces of the Ach and the Taku Kwam. Thank you. Thank you for letting us be here in the Indian village to speak, to say what needs to be said with true conviction. I'll keep it very short here that my Tlingit name is Eshkukha. I'm Te Kwaidi. Tlinedi uh, Yedi from Angun Kwan, Hootsit, Shanakit. And I'm here with my mother, Irene, my little sister, Genevieve, my sister, Andrea, my sister, Rinalda, and other family. And so we show our faces here tonight among you to say that the integrity of our work, the dignity of our work, is not for us, but for our children and our children's children. And I have the privilege of working for the Juneau School District in the capacity of Native Student Success Coordinator, and under that umbrella, also on the Equity Committee that was uh, formed back in 2011 or so. And out of that came an equity policy with the charge um, from the Board of Education of the Juneau School District that it would look at its resources and bring it to bear to make the curriculum, the content, culturally responsive, the training and hiring of teachers to be culturally responsive. And since that time, and even before then, long before then when there was JOM, uh, long before then in the early 70s, our people were here moving this rock uphill. And here we are today. With that, um, I'm standing here with uh, Jeff Short of the Board of Education, Juno School District, who has good news. In this coup week, the charge of us presenting today was to bring the happy news, the happy news, um, because today we heard um, the cries of our, of our community uh, wanting systemic change. We heard the ravens um, bring out their cry song and the eagles balance the cry song, all in relation to language loss. And that scary place that Kune spoke about, that it's up to us. And so we're here to lift that heaviness up, to make a commitment to this community and to our partners, to the children and the families and those to come, that we've heard you, we stand with you, and we are among you to make good of the promise 
And again, let's never forget those who have, who have carried this burden long, uh, long and are, are tired. Um, those that believed in us and are looking upon us in spirit. So with that, I will um, hand it over to um, Jeff Short to present, and then um, Kevin Allen, uh, school board, will also speak, and Ted Wilson of Clinket. Um, we may need to change uh, TLS to Clinket Learning Support. <laughs> it's teaching <laughs> learning support. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. So honored elders, native leaders, ladies, gentlemen, students, and children. It's a great pleasure and an honor for me to stand before you today to report on the work and products of the Tlingit Language Revitalization Task Force. I want to first of all thank the organizers of this conference for inviting me and my colleagues here to address you today. My name is Jeff Short. I'm a Clay Ka member of the Juneau School Board. I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My ancestry is German, English, and Irish. My parents were vagabonds, I guess. They moved around a lot. We don't have an ancestral home to speak of. I grew up in Southern California, and I moved to Juneau when I was 23, and I've lived here ever since. Now, before I begin, I would like to acknowledge uh, two people in particular. First, my fellow school board member, Kevin Allen, and former school board member and now representative, Andy Story, who was instrumental in getting this off the ground. I'd also like to acknowledge Superintendent Bridget Weiss, who is out of town on school business, but who is very much with us today in spirit. And finally, I'd like to uh, acknowledge all the members of the Tlingit Language Revitalization Task Force, along with the school, Juno School District staff <clears throat> who are in the room. And I, I'd ask you to please stand, if you would, uh, so that we can all recognize your contribution and all the hard work that you brought to this to get us to this moment. So is there anybody? Thank you. So I'm going to begin with uh, summarizing how the task force came to be, what the expected outcomes were, uh, what the deliberations focused on, and what the actual outcomes were, uh, including its final report. And then I'll introduce the school board, uh, Juneau School District Board policy on indigenous languages, its intent, and its potential uh, impacts on the district. Then I'm going to turn the floor over to my colleague, uh, Mr. Kevin Allen, who will talk about the larger implications of the policy for the district followed by uh, Mr. Ted Wilson, who will talk about more of the nuts and bolts of how we envision moving forward. So how the Tlingit Language Revitalization Task Force came into being uh, was really in response to uh, governor, <clears throat> uh, the previous governor's um, emergency declaration on languages uh, in, in Alaska. And, and this came up at a program evaluation committee meeting of the Board of Education in December 20th of 2017. Uh, I had just been elected to the board, and uh, this is, um, I think, my second meeting of, of that uh, committee. And uh, in the room with me were uh, Steve Whitney, Andy Story, Ted Wilson, Phil Losby, Karen Smolin, Barbara Cadiente Nelson, and Paula Casperson. We were discussing a review of world languages. <clears throat> it quickly became apparent that there were world languages, but then there was the Tlingit language, which is the language of this place and the indigenous people here. It was the language, the indigenous language of somewhere between 20 and 30% of our children in the school system. <clears throat> uh, when we were considering the current status of the language, it became apparent to us that first, if this language was to have a future, urgent action was needed to uh, help revitalize it. <clears throat> and second, that the school district had a large part to play, potentially, in aiding that moving forward. <clears throat> so, uh, and, th well, and third, 
We also recognize that the Juno School District could not do this by, its, by ourselves. This has to be a community effort with all the stakeholders contributing all the things that they're able to and all of us collaborating and communicating. So with that, the, uh, uh, I came up, I suggested the idea that we form a community task force. It was immediately endorsed by the committee. Uh, and then later, uh, about a, a few weeks later, I uh, met with the Superintendent Miller uh, to seek his advice on how to proceed to get this adopted by the board. And he just said, you don't need to get it adopted by the board. I'll just implement it right now through the native uh, uh, DIAC. Yeah, thank you, Barbara. <laughs> um, which he did. So he immediately authorized the effort and he recruited the uh, uh, Association of Alaska School Boards to moderate the effort. The school board established its terms of reference for this effort in the spring of 2018, and that involved the uh, direction of the superintendent to form a community task force aimed at identifying the most effective ways the Juneau School District could cooperate with community partners to help ensure the revitalization of the Tlingit language. We, were, we allowed for six months for the task force to complete its work and it was charged with producing a written uh, report communicating the findings of the rec and recommendations for the board's consideration. The first meeting of the uh, task force occurred on August of 2018, and the participating organizations in addition to the Juneau School District included the uh, Sea Alaska Heritage Institute, Gold Belt Heritage Foundation, the Central Council of Tlingit and Haida, the Association for the Education of Young Children, uh, UAS, the Tlingit Readers Incorporated, and the Association of uh, Alaska School Boards. These meetings concluded in the spring of 2019, and the final report was uh, produced in the fall of 2019, just a few weeks ago. In addition to that, and as a parallel effort within the school district, we, we launched an uh, initiative to uh, adopt a, a policy with regard to indigenous languages in the district, which we're gonna, I'm gonna go over in some detail in just a bit. So the expected outcomes of the uh, task force were first to come up with a comprehensive community plan for the Tlingit language revitalization. And this would involve curriculum alignment with the Tlingit language and, and scope with the arts, world language, social studies, science, and other subjects. Second, it guaranteed language instruction for the TCLL in middle school and high school so that we would have a pathway from uh, primary school through high school to support people who want to learn Tlingit all the way through their school career in the Juneau School District. Uh, third was uh, Tlingit language speaker recruitment and professional development would be supported for both teachers and administrators. And then we were charged to come up with a vision of what would this look like in five years, in 2023. Well, that was pretty ambitious and we didn't quite get there. But we did make a lot of progress. We spent a lot of time talking about and trying to pin down what exactly are we gonna do? And, and I think more fundamentally, why are we going to do it? For the what, we focus on, and excuse me, Dr. Twitchell, but I'm gonna use the word fluent. <laughs> we focused on producing, we wanted to focus on producing fluent speakers. And, and the reason we used that word was because we didn't want the district to just focus on teaching children a few words, a few phrases. We wanted them to use the language, use the language to think about the world, to conduct their own thoughts, to uh, be human and clink it. So we wanted to emphasize that aspect of instruction. We would be looking at, at, at an intent, a rather intensive program where we would have students who uh, would really gradually come to command the language. And then for the why, we identified a long list of benefits for why we should do this. Benefits not only for the students who are learning the language, uh, 
and, uh, and, and especially Tlingit students, but also benefits for other children in the school system if we were to do this. And as we said, it's a long list, but then there was a more fundamental reason to do it. And that fundamental reason was we noted that indigenous peoples have an inherent right to educate their children in their own indigenous language. It's recognized in the UN Declaration of Indigenous Rights, uh, rights of, for Declaration of Rights for Indigenous Peoples, uh, and we explicitly acknowledge that right as a district. So this is not something that we're offering. It's something that we're acknowledging and respecting that is an inherent right, and we, we, we embrace that perspective. So poignantly, during these uh, deliberations of the task force, we also heard uh, a great deal about the deplorable harm inflicted on the Native students by past school policies. For me, as a clay ka, this was heartbreaking. I read the in, in indigenous history of the United States, and at the end of that book, it stated that, as clay ka, we are not responsible for what our ancestors did, but we are responsible for what we do. And that's why I'm standing before you today, along with my, my school board colleagues, all of whom were completely supportive of moving this policy forward. So in our final report, we identified four major themes to emphasize. The first was Wu Qin, policy and support, and that focuses on building infrastructure, and that's in this document here, and policies to support Tlingit language and culture programs in the school district. The second is Think It You, where we partner, uh, where the partners establish a cohesive pre-K to 12, through 12 approach and footprint. The third is preparing adult speakers for educators, families, and others to use Think It in their daily lives. And finally, well, there was a lot of discussion that centered around healing and a kuik. This puzzled me at first, and at the end, it didn't puzzle me at all. And that is to celebrate and encourage Tlingit cultural practices and language in the schools and throughout the community. More details on these themes are contained in this document here, which I think are on all your tables. But nonetheless, most of the, uh, much of what we'd hope to accomplish remains to be done. So at the same time, we, uh, in the school board, started working on developing a, an explicit policy for indigenous languages. <clears throat> the heart of that policy is in the third paragraph. And I'm going to just read it, because I, I find it so, uh, so fo focally important. It is recognizing both the role that public education has played historically in suppressing the use of the Tlingit language and the now widely acknowledged human right of indigenous peoples to preserve, use, and educate their children in their native language, the board seeks to work with and to contribute to other community organizations in efforts to ensure a stable or growing community of fluent speakers in the Tlingit language. This is an official position now of the school board in, in Juneau. To support that, the board commits to collaborating with community partners on programs and courses that allow students to acquire and maintain fluency in the Tlingit language. Furthermore, the, the superintendent is directed to work and coordinate with locally interested parties and community members to determine how to best incorporate local, uh, the Tlingit language into the curriculum. We did this with our eyes open that this uh, implies that it may very well lead to a pre-K through 12 immersion school in Tlingit. Okay. 
Thank you. So in closing, I want to emphasize that the board hopes these efforts will turn the page on relations between the Tlingit and the white communities in Juneau. We look forward to a true co-equal partnership wherein each side listens carefully to the other, respects that although we share broadly similar values, our emphasis on particular values may differ, and we need to respect that, and that we will collaborate together to find the best way forward. So thank you, and I'm going to turn this over to my colleague now, Kevin Allen. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, my name is Kevin Allen, and I just wanted to first of all start off by saying, "Young Yedi Ayahat," and I serve on the board, and I was elected last year, and I was just going to briefly talk over some of the points about this policy, and also additional comments about it. Now this policy acknowledges the historical suppression of the Clinkett language the district had done. It also actively works towards being transparent in our commitment to work with and coordinate with our partners to revitalize Clinkett. And we have had an innumerable amount of organizations and language warriors help us bring and breathe new life and introducing indigenous culture, values, and language to the district. It's really remarkable work. And we honor those who have passed on and have had contributed to that progress. On another note, this policy is a trailblazer. It's the first of its kind ever in the state. And the Association of Alaskan School Boards saw this policy and wanted to see this distributed to the districts of the state. So we have helped progress the revitalization, like, the revitalization effort in other communities. And with this policy, the task force report outlining future work, AASB recognition and distribution, a significant benchmark has been met, and we have great confidence in your guidance in the coming academic years. And to forward the great flame that the larger language revitalization effort has created. And as a partner, we are committed to assisting. Gunashish. Good evening, everyone, and I want to thank you for the invitation to be here tonight. Uh, my name is Ted Wilson, Director of Teaching and Learning Support for the Juneau School District. I grew up in North Idaho and then spent time in both Spokane and Olympia, Washington, before coming to Juneau in 1995 and um, was a teacher at Glacier Valley and then principal at Glacier Valley for 17 years. And there are lots of folks that I would like to acknowledge for what I have learned about Clinkett language uh, in the time that I've been in Juneau. But one of the first people uh, that I spent a lot of time talking with about how to um, help students learn the Clinkett language was Hans Chester, who I don't think is here tonight. But he worked for a long time with me at Glacier Valley and now is working with the TCLL program. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that, th that he was one of the people that uh, helped me understand what the work was that needed to happen. So as uh, board members, uh, Dr. Short and Mr. Allen said, the policy about what we're going to do with uh, Clinkett language revitalization has been going on for a long time, long before I came to Juneau. Um, but the work that continues is work that is not just the school district, but the school district and a lot of partners. Uh, we work closely with Gold Belt Heritage, Sea Alaska Institute, uh, Clinkett and Haida Central Council, and UAS. 
um, as well as Douglas Island Association to uh, bring all kinds of resources to bear. Some of the things that are taking place currently, you all know that we have the TCLL program uh, located at Harborview School. Um, this year, starting in the second semester, uh, through work that Barbara has done and, help, and working with um, Sea Alaska to secure funding, we're going to be able to begin the work of extending TCLL into the middle school. We'll have a teacher at Floyd Dryden who will help extend that work. We've already had partnership with Gold Belt to provide uh, Clinkett language classes at the middle schools, but this effort will help us establish a, an extended TCLL. We've also worked with both Gold Belt and Sea Alaska to provide uh, language um, classes and elder presence in all of the schools. Uh, one of the newest um, endeavors is with Gold Belt to establish a uh, um, Clinkett language uh, course pathway at Thunder Mountain High School. And it's underway this fall with an ethnomathematics course being taught by one of the high school teachers there. Um, there are a lot of other efforts that have also been underway um, working with, with the Head Start uh, classrooms. We host two of those within the school district uh, and <clears throat> include them in the work that we do in trying to increase the amount of preschool spaces that are available for students in Juneau. Um, we have um, worked with Sea Alaska with their uh, through the Cultural Lens, which they just announced that we're going to have another grant for the elementary teachers and uh, principals. Uh, previous grants have provided for professional development for the secondary teachers and principals so that they can be uh, more grounded in uh, Clinkett language and Clinkett culture and the place that is Juno. Um, so that they can um, work with students more effectively, knowing, helping those students know where it is that they live and who they are. And so we're very glad that the elementary teachers and principals will now have that same experience. Um, also through that grant, we'll have the opportunity for more um, uh, culturally uh, responsive education conferences that will include uh, Juno, sta Juno District staff. And <clears throat> we also um, have the opportunity through um, grant money to uh, provide uh, Northwest Coast Design courses for students at the high school level that are aligned with UAS so that uh, students can uh, earn college credit. And the same can happen with high school uh, Clinkett language coursework that that can also earn not only high school credit, but college credit. So there, there are a lot of um, efforts that we are cooperating with other um, partners on. Um, we also at the school district have cultural specialists that we have work at every school so that uh, teachers that want to um, either bring an elder into the classroom or a specialist to help them when in the design of their uh, classes for students or experiences for students um, can do that in a culturally responsive way. And um, we're very um, pleased at the opportunity to work with um, these agencies to do that. Um, one of the last things is um, I appreciate the work that Barbara does because Barbara gets to do a lot of the um, helping all of us work together to figure out the paths that are going to be um, effective for helping you know, the school district figure out all of its processes and the other um, partners to figure out their processes and how, have all of them work so that they're going to benefit students. So thank you, Barbara, for that work. So thank you all. Thank you, thank you, Ted. 
at this point, uh, as we turn it over, I know that uh, there was hopes that there would be a response. And, and uh, I see the hand of Kingis Day go up. So I'll hand the mic over to you. I want to say to all of us here that what a long time ago what our people would do because the words of our people, like the young man that came up here and spoke before these men spoke, they would have stood up and said, They would thank the speaker because they don't want his words just to float around and thanking another person as accepting the gift that was given, which means we become responsible. That's the word for kunashish. We are receiving a gift that we didn't earn. It was given to us like our language. And this evening here with Barbara and these three men up here, what they did and what they're doing is answering the call of our ancestors regarding our language. And look at them. I heard a few words in Tlingit, but there aren't very many words that they can speak. Yet they answered the call in an institution that is not Clinket, but an institution that is working to teach our children, and they're acknowledging and recognizing us as a people. They're accepting us instead of the laughing and the putting down that happened in the school. These men up here our officials saying to us, we accept your ways, accept your language. And I believe if those individuals that went before us in 1980, and it would take a long time to give their names, they'd be cheering like you can't believe right now. So I'm saying thank you, Barbara, and thank you, everybody that was on, on the uh, revitalization committee. But thank you for what you're doing. I don't want your words to fall down. That means we take responsibility. Responsibility means we're going to help the school system to be able to do the kind of things that they want to do. So thank you very, very much. And Lance, thank you for those words that you spoke. My grandfather's people, I don't want his words to just drift around as well. So even though if he may not be here, I'm saying thank you to him and I'm accepting his words. You heard my grandfather, King Te. You heard his words. I want you also to know how we ravens feel regarding what you spoke this evening. Yuhan ka school district yejinei ka ka. Those of you that work within the school district is who we're speaking to. Thank. Yon yedi acha akant kyan. 
the Yan Ye be my in-laws. My most valuable outer shell, the Te Kwebi people. Thank this policy that you have shared with us is very, very significant, very important. This is a real example of how we work together and good fortune will follow us in working together. There are some of us here that are old, getting old, and we may never see the kind of things that will happen for our grandchildren. But we know that it will be great. You've heard how we were in the past, how things have changed, and how things are changing, and how they will affect our grandchildren. You have done a great, great work, and we want to say thank you. And he's speaking in behalf of the ravens. It's as if I'm going to add it. He didn't say this, but I'm going to add it to it. Austin Hammond, his older brother, and Nora, and others that have gone before, are here thanking you for what you've taken the initiative to do in the leadership. So thank you very much. This has always been uh, what we've always done in the past. Austin Hammond went into the schools. He'd come in with his chalkat blanket, and he'd come in with a shakiat, and the kids would look up at him and wow, and they would call him a king. That's a king. king. Huh? He's a king. He's a king. <laughs> king. King of <laughs> King Jikwana. Oh, King Jikwana. <laughs> we have fun like this. Sometimes we don't understand each other, but that's good. It helps us to end what we were saying because that's the way we feel tonight. Hatu wu yik e. hatu yik e. What do you say, like water? That's why you want to cook food in your own language now. No. <laughs> I, couldn't, I can't hear it. My hearing aid. I think his hearing aid is dying. The batteries. <laughs> but I wanted to thank you for encouraging us to move forward. And I've been fortunate enough to be, was went and applied for a cert certificate to go into the schools and become a certified teacher. I say, um, you know, there's some struggles there, but I believe 
all the ones I'm working with will begin to recognize the power of our language when it's done with a fluency. There's a much difference when you're fluent in how you can teach our children. There's gestures that, are, that take place that I don't per se plan or put it on a piece of paper, but things of helping the students learn without being, um, being strong with, but being strong just by the words and how you use them. And so I, I'm, I'm beginning to learn and develop that proper etiquette of how we as Tlingit people teach our children. So I'm always asking and thinking, how can anyone evaluate me when they don't have the culture and they don't have the language, whether it's a good education or teaching system or not? I just say that that's what I'm thinking, and so maybe I can educate somebody and let them know what to look for. Thank you for listening to my grandfather. And in conclusion, I just want to say thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience. It's very, very important. Thank you. We have a few people who did want to who participate on the language task force and did want to provide a response as well. And they are representative of the University of Alaska, and that would be Ronalda Kediente Brown. And it's her birthday today. I let her know we might want to sing her happy birthday. And also Elfie Price and Christy Dillingham, um, who are with SHI. I, I believe we can invite Nancy Barnes up too, but I, I want to <laughs> I want to also acknowledge Mary Marks who works with the Juno Clinket and Haida Community Council and is our education chair. Um, I had spoken with a couple young ladies from Ketchikan earlier today and they talked about in their schools they teach Simshian, Haida and Clinket. And so if you didn't think the bar was high enough, maybe that's something we can look at as well in the Juno School District. Like cheese. Fernando. Good, good evening, and I realize you've all been um, sitting for a while, so I will um, promise I'll keep this very short. Um, I serve as Associate Vice Chancellor of Native Education Programs and oversee the Preparing Indigenous Teachers and Administrators for Alaska Schools Program as part of the University of Alaska Southeast. And it's a privilege to be here tonight and a, a pleasant close to a very um, busy um, day, week, month. Um, we, you know that we have uh, uh, financial challenges uh, with the state. Tomorrow I'm leading a university group with representatives from Fairbanks, Anchorage, and Juneau to talk about indigenous programming. And I'll say um, this evening that the actions that the Juneau School District has taken um, with its initiative I, is something that I'll carry um, to that meeting as evidence of our growing need. Um, this would not happen without the, the language speakers that we're fortunate enough to, to um, support with this effort. Most recently, UAS received its um, accreditation favorably from the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities. And one of the, the five commendations spoke specifically to the effort that UAS is doing with its indigenous studies um, efforts in language and, and general studies. And of course, we welcome registrations and um, enrollment and would encourage you. I will say that um, my my father is always my, um, has always been and always will be my role model. After he um, pushed, kept pushing back his retirement on, on um, his employer's urging, he finally said enough, and he retired at age 70. 
He then turned around and enrolled in college and uh, worked on his, uh, his associate's degree. He wrote a cookbook um, as a foundation of, of um, the work that many of, of you who have been around for a long while know um, Andres um, Cadiente's um, um, expertise around the, the kitchen. Um, so that message is that it's never too late, and um, we just encourage you all to consider um, the, that formal structure as just an opportunity to learn and grow and interact with others. So my um, um, great appreciation to the work of the task force and um, realize that the work is just beginning, that um, we are standing with you um, in partnership and appreciate um, all of the, the heart that went into this work. So good old sheesh. Christy, Christy, are you speaking? Thank you, Mary. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Christy Dillingham. I'm representing Sea Alaska Heritage Institute tonight as their education director. Um, and I want to thank everyone for that opportunity today. I was able to participate in the roundtable discussion today. And what I learned and what I heard was heartfelt and it was real. And it reaffirms a lot of the work that Sea Alaska um, is committed to and what I'm committed to supporting through a lot of the grants that we have going at this time. So thank you for um, allowing me to listen and learn with you today. Um, there are many organizations here tonight and there are many organizations that were mentioned in their efforts to partake in the Language Revitalization Task Force. Um, each and every one of them is working hard and diligently to figure out how do we dig deep into the work that needs to happen? How do we work together? How do we come together? How do we hold each other up to do the hard work that it's going to take to keep moving um, the number of speakers on Lance's diagram up and those language learners keep moving them up? I wanted to share with you all, um, you know, we all have our funding sources right now, Gold Belt, Clinkett and Haida, Sea Alaska Heritage Institute, Douglas Indian Association. We're all working hard to make sure that we are providing the resources to work with the school districts so that the work can happen. I just wanted to share some numbers with you all so you all have an idea of, of really what it's taking behind the scenes. In 2019, Sea Alaska Heritage spent approximately 1.5 million on language revitalization. In 2020, um, Sea Alaska Heritage Institute will be spending two point, approximately 2.5 million on the language revitalization of not just Klingit, but also Hadkil and Shemalgik. Between 2016 and 2022, the rough estimates right now we're looking at is approximately $10 million going towards the revitalization efforts. Um, it, it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of digging in deep, and it's an honor to be here to figure it out with you all. Um, I kind of want to add something that I recently read in um, a research, and, and it's about neuroscience, and it's about the cognitive outputs of bilinguals versus monolinguals. And I shared it with some folks today, and they but if we are looking at raising our kids and learning a second language, becoming bilingual, um, it automatically 
expands that brain power so that they are outperforming through executive functioning tasks like problem solving, logical reasoning, um, creative thinking. And so becoming bilingual for our youth is adding an additional asset for them for their future. Um, as I learned from some elders today, our children need to know who they are, they need to know their language, and they need to know their history. And so as we keep moving forward, I look forward to the work with all of you all, with all the organizations here today. Gunishchish. Lachishu <laughs> The long king's air to good in I log and Sigop di Wayu Gispit water dip tegu Simsianu decider dis getaganiets Get land you will Natasu Look will look will Luam go to New will need to some look will Luam go to No will Nach knew you the house um uh tatni sa uh uh sa get one uh hot hotka goru hotka goru uh look what lui am goru will get quite a system. So I, I introduced myself um <clears throat> in in the in the words that I love to say. Um and so I, I, I told you my name is Shagop. It's my Simshian name. I've only had it for a couple of months, and so I'm going to use it every chance I get. Um, and I, I talked about being happy to see all of you in a couple of different languages. And I talked about how my heart is full to be here today, to hear all of the words. Um, You know what the uh, what the school board has done um, is really powerful. Uh, they are they are not just throwing us a bone; they are saving our lives. Doctor Walter Soboloff said, "When we know who we are, we don't hurt ourselves." Learning our languages and our cultural heritage is restorative. I'm living proof of that. A few years ago, I was not in a good place. And I set out to learn some Algic due to a whole host of reasons, which I won't go into now, because I believe um, we're running short on time. But if you come tomorrow at 10.30, I'm going to tell you more about our language work and about how reclaiming our cultural identity is restorative, healing, and powerful. So, um, and another thing, they, they wanted me to originally talk to you about the challenges of learning some Aliyah in this day and age, and then also my vision for the future. So I'm going to keep it brief, but I, I want to touch on those things. Here in Juno. Uh, there's about a dozen of us who meet every week to learn some Aleich together. And we don't have a <clears throat> speaker with a high degree of fluency 
here in Juneau. So it's a challenge. We've had to rely on help from other people, from other communities. But four years ago, five of us met in a church basement, and we had maybe 50 or 60 words of vocabulary. Now we speak sentences to each other, and we understand what we're saying. We're on social media. We've re recently taken steps to reclaim our cultural identity together, and it's been restorative and healing. So what, um, what's happening here today is um, it gives a lot of hope. And um, I really want to um, shout out to Kengiste and uh, Nibibu John, who gave me some unexpected things today. Kengiste was saying that we need to be gentle with each other. We need to be kind to each other. And this is a big problem in language work. People are always constantly trying to um, outdo each other, not just friendly competition, but it can be hurtful. Um, and so to hear respected elders encourage us to put that aside and work together is encouraging. Um, earlier we were talking about what's your vision for the future of your language. And I was just like, I don't want my language to die. It could disappear in the next couple of generations if more people don't do something. That's a really sad outlook. Nabibu John Hanlon said, my vision is our grandchildren and great-grandchildren are going to have to learn English as a second language. And that's the first time somebody put that idea in my heart. And uh, it, it, it made me a, stretch my vision that much more. Stoics, Stoics at Newsome, thank you for, for um, to the organize, organizing committee for including Simshian and Haida in this Sharing Our Knowledge conference. They went to great efforts to do that. And um, I, I, it's very much appreciated. You know, I, I, uh, I love living among my, my Tlingit relatives. Um, and sometimes it's hard to cling to your Simshian language, your Haida language and traditions when there aren't very many of us, but I felt nothing but support. And so with that, I, I'd like to uh, leave you with one last um, demonstration of my vision for the future. Lipkilks will I inskin. Xibu Akshdawayu, Lakshkik Diptegu, Simshianu Dishhaida Dishgedaganitsk. Wadi nadi, wadi, wadi daddy nagwadi, wadi nagwadu. Um, Kristen Price. Kristen Price, uh, wadi noyu, um, and tachtashki gohon wadi simtiu. And do exit newsom. This is our future, Iowa. Gunnachish to our school board, to Ted Wilson, our superintendent, Bridget Weiss, and the awesome team that came together to form this committee, this task force, to brainstorm together a difficult task on Tlingit people. 
on our ways of life, on our ways of who we are, the land that we stand on, our front yard, our backyard, our relatives down, down the rivers, down the channels. We're complex. But I want to thank you so much for hearing us, school board, to hear our voices that we no longer have to have a white flag or to be put under the carpet anymore. To hear this language, our culture, our history going to be brought back into our schools the right way. To talk about who we are. That's taking back my power. That's giving power back to my children, to my grandchildren, and children to come. I share with you youth that are still here. It's possible. It's possible to learn your language. I have my boys here, and I'd like for them to stand. Gook? These boys, my two boys, my son Paul is the oldest, and my youngest son Elijah. A lot of our elders know who they are, but I ask the youth and even the young adults here that if you have a question, ask them. This is the relationship that we're to have for each other. It doesn't mean someone's better than the other. That are young, and even their own dad, you heard him say today that sometimes he feels like his children know more than him. My children, when they were growing up, it is no lie, they will tell you, I brought them to every function that was available to us in our community, whether it was here in Juneau or up in Anchorage. These events were important to us. It was part of our values. I was a part of that generation that I didn't get to speak my language. But I get to look at my children that know how to speak the language. And they have pride when they speak. They talk with you, not down, not above or around you. So learning our language, whether it's in your home environment, in your respective homes, your communities are sitting at the feet of your elders. I'm looking to you, the elders that are still alive, that we carry on this language, whether you want to call it revitalization or restoration. I feel empowered. 50 years ago, I wasn't. I had the worst experience of my life. And it happened in Harborview School. But when I was an employee of the district and I worked in Harborview School, Believe me, the fear was real. I didn't know what I was going to say or how I feel about this policy. I didn't know if I felt violated or being mocked. But I look at my children because they know the language and they're going to teach my granddaughters. 
and I have peace. Our language is important. And if we keep it in our homes and instill that in our children, our language will become real. My own granddaughter was with her mother in Iowa, teaching her friends and adults how to speak Thinget. That's how proud she is, and she's five. So it, I can move on now. That bruise that was there is slowly going away. And we can do this together. I want to thank the school district again and Barbara and Jeff and Kevin. That breathing fling it back into policy. And breathing fling it back into our schools. And giving a strength and encouragement to our children that we can say, yeah, I am fling it. I am Haida. I am Simshian. This is what our language does for us, is it empowers us. It gives us the power back. It's restoring the power. I thank you for allowing me to speak and you hear my words. Gunnath Chish. As my friend Mary would say, my dear friend, how gunish chish. Been a long day, everybody. Everybody take a deep breath. Saki sha what you hawk to a sock. Deki na ayahat, de shi tanya di ayahat. Di ya like gusu di kwa login. My name is Linda Carroll. My parents were Robert and Darlene Carroll. My mother was full Haida. My father's from Angoon. I started off many, many years ago trying to learn my language, Haida, which is I'm a raven thunderbird. And some of the words that have given us strength is the, is the, the educated people, the people who take the time. It gives me great pleasure to be able to introduce uh, one of my hot kill teachers, Linda Skill Jade Shrak. How we? Jat anga, kill sly anga, hot out losses. The lung is andi hungal gung, odd length is and di good night lagung. I said, uh, women of high esteem, men of high esteem, and good people, I'm honored with your presence and I'm very happy to be here. I want to. Um, Give thanks to Gold Belt for the invitation to speak a little bit about the Haida language. Um, before I start, though, I want to introduce myself uh, in Hadkil. Nora Kogo di Nanu Ijen, Robert Kogo di Chenu Ijen, Verna Skilai di Au Ijen, Skiljade Hinu di Kiang, Gaelis Gust Udi Kualagen. Adnas Udi Ijung, 
My grandmother was Nora Kogo, my grandfather was Robert Kogo, and my mother is Vernis Skilai, and my name is Skil Jade. I am of the Raven Moiety and from the Shark House. Gets Han Hat Ilangai Anu Hangulang, Iskan University of Alaska Anu Hangulang, Had Kil Uthi Skadagung. I uh, work for the Ketchikan Indian community, and I also uh, teach Hadkill at the for the University of Alaska Southeast. Um, and with the Ketchikan Indian community, um, I would like to mention that we not only have a Hadkill program, a Haida program, we have Klinkit and we have uh, Shmelgyak, the Simshian language. And KIC has been doing this for, for many years, ever since I can remember. They've always had a program for all three um, nations. And um, I would like, I have a couple of um, co-workers here in attendance too, and I would like them to stand. Yakdushi, Iskian Kiestlas. And um, they are the two young ladies that are working on our, the Tlingit language. Oh, uh. <laughs> so a little bit about um, Hadkil. I, I don't want to take much time because I know we're behind schedule, but um, through the KIC program, what I've been doing the last um, several years is I teach family language classes. So parents or caregivers are encouraged to bring their children no matter what age they are. I just started a class recently and um, I have, I think the youngest is like six months old. And when the children, I believe, you know, when they're that young and they're hearing the language and the parents are speaking to them in the language that they're learning in classes, then um, we will bring our language back. And the uh, course that I teach at the university is an online a distant delivery course, which is has been challenging to teach online because you don't have anybody in the room with you. You can't be as interactive with your students. And, um, but we're doing the best that we can. And this uh, semester, I have 25 students in the course, plus a wait list. So the um, interest is definitely growing, and that's so encouraging. Um, because with the, the Haida, we have about 20 fluent speakers, and that's a high, high number. I'm giving a little bit of cush there. We have two fluent speakers in Ketchikan. Um, my main mentor has been Phyllis Omquist, Kwigai Ewans. She's 93 now, and um, her health has prevented her from helping me any further. Every once in a while, I'll... Um, you know, she'll help me out when she can, but um, most of the time now I just, you know, visit her and try not to do any hot kill work because it's uh, pretty hard for her to be doing that now. And um, in Skidigit, the village of Skidigit on Haida Gwaii, I just found out that there are eight fluent speakers and that's where the biggest number of fluent speakers is for hot kill. And um, in Masset, there are a couple of fluent speakers. So I just wanted to share that. And I definitely always let my students know how proud I am of them for stepping forward to learn the language because um, we can't allow it. We can't allow it to go away. And as we've all been hearing throughout the day, our language defines who we are. It's 
connected to our culture and everything that we are. Um, so I just, um, you know, encourage if any of you in this room have not started a journey of learning your language, I encourage you to do that because now, you know, we have um, more teachers that are coming up. Um, and actually, that's one of the things I wanted to mention about KIC real quick is uh, that our tribal organization has um, hired some apprentices for us that have been doing the work alone for quite a while. And um, so we're really, really pleased that we have some help. And I already feel a little bit of relief because my apprentice, she has been subbing for me when I am out of town. And uh, she did last year when I was teaching in the high school. And then uh, she subbed for me tonight because I'm here. And I'm happy to be here and uh, to learn from each one of you for the next couple of days. Uh, love, I mean, I could talk about language forever, but <laughs> we don't have any more time. So how uh, for listening, Damana Ganj King U. Please give her a big hand, Hawa De Blanc. So we have some great action coming up here pretty quick. Please bear with us.
and the sheesh for the Gold Belt Teen Dance Group. Hakusti Dach Chunk. And uh, our next song is going to be uh, the Kogwan Tom Box House Love Song.
next song we're going to sing, it introduces the Shafiat, it's called the Abalone Pin uh, song. It's owned by the Geishi Tong, the Raven people. There's Cheesh to be short from Geishi uh, Fit. Uh, Tan that came in and worked with the students at Sea Alaska Heritage Institute last night. And also, Joe Zuba came in and also talked to us about some, some points about uh, uh, this song. Uh, it introduces the uh, headdresses, the Yekutis, that we're going to sing after. So, okay. Right there. Okay. <coughs> We're setting up right now, it takes a little time. We're gonna have a blanket, and uh, <clears throat> Philip's gonna dance the shark pit dress. <laughs> Who wears the blanket?
Do the Raven people have the Raven blanket or this stuff with the Raven blanket? Oh, yeah. Okay. So be ready with the blanket. Raven, dancer. Hey, Shitan. Um, this is for the dance, right? Yeah. 
Is cheese. Okay, oh, nay. Raven. You can do it? Okay. Yeah. Raven, come up here. Okay. Okay, oh, nay. Wait, how? Can you get on
Unfortunately, this type of stuff happens. We're running on very low energy. And there's a lot of excitement, a lot of emotion. Um, bear with us. If I could take this moment to recognize um, this young group, it's a very collaborative effort between all of us. You may recognize myself. I'm learning from each and every one of you throughout the crowd, throughout each person within this group. It's a collaborative effort. I'm from Yakutap, so I kind of stick out a little bit more, not wearing a blanket, but I'm deeply honored to be able to participate with the um, understanding of the newfound education that's allowing us to stand with us in the efforts that we're trying to contribute to um, find the strength and courage necessary in order to perform such songs. There's a lot of energy and strength that we're rejuvenating at this very moment. I certainly um, Hope and recognition that if anything is done incorrectly, that we're extending our effort without um, the means of disrespect. Being of Yakutat, there's a lot of songs that I'm learning from you guys, so I hope that um, with what we're going to continue to share with you, that uh, we're all in this together. So. If we continue to proceed forward, um, certainly want to be hydrated. Okay. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Testing. Yeah, you go through it once first. Yeah. We're practicing. Okay, go. <laughs> Cook. Cook. Wait, how? Hey, hi. How you doing,
خوش کی خوانیت کی Shango Kady at Creep. Yet
Could we have Paul Marx, Ed Coons, and who else? Paul, uh, Fred White up here, please. Charlie, I know. So we call. Uh, I believe Fred is getting a check. So Gina Traya has in it cost Texati. Wuhan Butisuku Wasako de Yen Akonoguha Utie de Kuhat Nutra Atrawa Wuhan Butisuku Wasayana Hikha. Chick Cage, you Chick Right now, I'm just um, processing and trying to bring our way of cultural things in the line. Achawa just how you got tangi in Kokosa art to Yeguatra. Jade, I knew her Shakokau, ye Kokaha. Asilko has ye secura on Clasas to in Kokoniko at Lake ya Wuhan would to secure. Slikas Yachinti Nutra Ya Hadat Natinuch Haswusikun Wasa Kaudiyin Ha Yaigi Kwa Jasaku Akaya just a day I knew one. You take away, chick. Oh, what you wake go to tea. So I'm making an apology to our ancestors, is what I was doing to let you know. And that's as far as I'm going to say, so we don't feel bad but that it's mentioned to this, to our ancestors. Ya yidata ha, ya gao. Sa kakhtu ti, tlaik jiat luk nakhadi, sa tu jidek kuti ha ya yidak. U tuwa si gukwa, dana u tu ja kikha. Achawa got to woods, Yohan. I do said to us to go Dana Hajit had got to reek her. Got you on a hold it. I'll show you her.
we say it to her. We say the name of our ancestor. We'll just give it. Jen Kadana Kadik Kotika. And whoever else wants to bring some money can put it in there. And I'll share with you, we're going to kill the money because this is what needs to be done. Uh, oh, I just told him that. Uh, okay, who wants to be first? Oh, And the money that's being brought up will be, some of it will be given to whoever's going to hold the, the money on the forehead of the one that will receive the name. And the other part that's left over will be given to the uh, TCLL in Harborview for, to buy snacks for the children. Oh, and over here. Yeah. They're all coming up. Just, just stand here. Ah, Tlain Gunal Cheesh, Aya. Yain Cheesh Khatling Get. need uh, let's put the ball here your eagle uh, Marianne Marianne maybe can help count the money and we'll have a couple of students so they'll know what to do we need two eagle girls. There's one here. She's a take away D. Yeah. And Marianne will help you, let you know what you need to do. Yeah. 
where I'll have a We're doing some things here. No, my brother Joe is going to do a yake song while the money's being counted. This is normally what takes place at a kuik. Ikoha kuk. and to respond by the eagles. Sesatu aushko nitchkahuki wuhika a ye kuti a chaya adekahia hiaita. That's convert ka to do shidana eka oge. Cheesh. $306. Wow. Cheesh <laughs> money counters dana to uh, oh, wow. Yeah, you did. Go to Jahaya. You see, Yakashiha. You say to us, Guyata, 
Just we all could get. Yeah, to her. So, wait to us. Wait to us, too. Oh, the names? Uh, she gave you, okay, we're going to kill the money now. I said, test the Jiwu. I'll go. I'll go ahead, move over for it. Which group would you? He's going to call, tell us the names, and then the, you guys will call it out. Group two. Pin two, Kade. Ux te khuish. Ux te khuish, Kade. Saat. Saat, Kade. Kekhi. Kekhi. Yaniki, Yaniki, Kuluk, Kuluk, Kade, Kate, 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 Two all Kade. Two all Kade. Shut out Kade. Pakistan. 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 Fifty C. Fifty C. Cade. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Okay, man. He's going to sing a song. Okay. What took place is when we were calling the names of our departed ancestors over the bowl and is we're killing the money. And once the money is killed, it belongs to nobody. That's why it's so easy for us to give it away and whoever, and whoever takes it doesn't feel like they're getting any money. It's when it's done right. Say where the name came from. Yeah, just to explain the history. One of our coho ladies from about five generations back had three daughters. One was named Kuduk, one was named Kriki, and one was named Kajichuki. Q 
Kubuk had a son whose name was Dehodou, James Willard. Another daughter was named Keatley, which is where my family line came from. Khadija Keith had two children, but they died before they had any children. Dekwadu had, he was from Kukwad, and he was a Koho leader. He had a shirt made for him out of Usain that was made by the Gurida, the people from Copper River. After he died, that shirt was passed on to his nephews here in Juno. One of the nephews was Joe Collier. Whose, whose name was What's Now? What's Now, like a lot of the younger men at that time, took up the sport of boxing. He was a fighter. <sighs> Peter Simpson was the driving force for the A and B. He asked, whose land is this? And they, had, they answered back, ours. It's a young man who's getting a new name, I will ask. Where is he? Who? Oh. Whose language and culture is this? Ours. That fight for it. He takes the name What's Da from Joe Collier, who was a, in his division, was champion. Where's the name? What's Da? When you'll tell them the name and he'll repeat it, everyone else will repeat it. Four times. How many times? Four. Four times. Gook. What? What's the? What's the? Uh? What's the? Uh? What's the? Uh? What's the? What's the ah? Uh? What's the ah? Uh? Yeah. Uh. Kish. No, he's got Okay. 
Are there any coho people in the house? All the cohos up here? All the cohos? All the cohos up here? Are there any more coho people? We're going to sing for this man, man the Coho Hat Song. You go, I have fun. You go, I have fun. Flukes are cushy, yeah. Flukes are cushy, yeah. Don't I take? Don't I take? Go! Oh. 
you all will have to forgive me because I am just a chief spokesperson for the Kohu people. And I don't know most of the songs, so the only one I knew real good was this song, the Koho Hat song. I know I'm going to get some, uh, uh, what do you call it, back talk on that, when the other people see it. But I'm going to tell them, then why don't you travel with me? <laughs> you guys know the song. I know. So thank you all. Thank you all for witnessing this. And I congratulate you. You are now a member of the Koho people. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that young man there? Where's that? Come over here. Oh, boy. Now I feel good. You were dancing for the ladies. Hey! <laughs> Atta boy. Atta boy. Oh, boy. Now I can go meet my ancestors in peace. <laughs> I'm going to change. And I choose to cut you on, all of you. And I, uh, if I may take the time to uh, thank the Juno High School for what they have done. Thank you very much. 
we've been trying to get back our language for years. And now all of you that are sitting there that are with the school district, I thank you all very much. Gonna cheese. Yeah, 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 Kosaka, gonna cheese. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gonna cheese. Uh, Dion? Officially, I would like to uh, let Dion bring this to the TCLL classes. We have three classes there, classrooms. Maybe they could be divided up through three classes. And this will be used for the children to have snacks because uh, there's budget and we're sometimes struggling where we're going to get their snacks from. And children need snacks. You know? <laughs> Miss Genevieve knows. Miss Genevieve knows. She eats half of them. <laughs> She's a good teacher. <laughs> but anyway, thank you all for all the donations and for all the kind attention. And the young man, his confidence has built, been built in just a few minutes here. Isn't that awesome? And I know Dion is always wanting our children to, she knows a lot of our children that don't have names. And look at what a name does. Once you're given a name, it becomes a part of the family. So we want our children to get names. Gonna cheesh, gonna cheesh. I would like to say just a few words, not too long. All the dancers are tired now. I uh, wanted to talk about when I went to Catholic school, my grandfather taught Kayu de Sagun. My dad died when I was only two years old. John Hunter, and Yu de Sagun. They were from Sitka. And when my, uh, when he, their dad died, they took a canoe from Sitka to Angoon. And I believe that's where he met my mother. And uh, I had sisters and brothers. Uh, I had one brother that was next to me, and uh, ever since he started talking when he was little, he w my mother would tell him, and he'd say, he started saying that when he started talking. And, that, and then I had another brother that was crippled. I don't know, he was born that way. He used to play follow the leader and run behind the kids. And uh, he had fun before he died. I had a grandmother, Kasu Yudusagun, and it was hard on me after my dad died. I was only two years old, but it was hard. And when my mother remarried, uh, she married someone from uh, Whitehorse. And uh, I used to try to teach him as little I was. I used to tell him, and he'd say, Achyanuk. I'd say, Tlaik, Achyanuk, Achyanuk. He never did say Achyanuk. And uh, anyway, uh, my grandfather had my two brothers, Percy and Rodney, and uh, they, 
They were with my grandfather, but I believe my grandfather wasn't feeling well. So he made an appointment for them to go to Pius Tenth Mission. And I, uh, he called my mother and uh, told her that she, uh, he wanted me to go to Pius Tenth Mission with my brothers. And uh, I went up there with them. And I had a friend, her name was Pearl. She was from Yakutat. She used to, uh, her and I used to speak Tlingit. And every time we got caught, the sisters said, put your hand out. They ruled our hands for speaking Tlingit. So um, I uh, used to cry when I uh, thought of it. And uh, then I was with my daughter, Rinalda, at one of her meetings. And she, uh, she was uh, talking with the students. And uh, I, when she was talking, when I was talking about that, I, she told me to talk about it. And when I started talking about it, I started crying. And a um, blonde girl from uh, her student body came to me and put her arm around me. And she said, I'm sorry. Uh, and I think that started my healing. Anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, another part where my, my daughter and I, uh, she wanted to go shopping. And uh, we went downtown. And the street where you turned into downtown, we, 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 she stopped there. And here comes a raven. How many ravens do we have here? Anyway, yeah. The raven came and was going to cross the street and stopped and looked both ways and looked at us. And it crossed over. And when it crossed over, it turned around like bowed his head, thank you. And, and then he walked away again. <laughs> I always think about that. I thought that was really cute, a raven <laughs> making sure his way was all right to cross the street. And I hope your ravens remember that. They're, they're pretty well. Even, even the raven can bow his head. <laughs> and I, had, um, I went to classes and to teach the children think it, and uh, there was one blonde boy. He danced real good. He was a good dancer. And I don't remember his name. After all, I'm 92 years old. I forget, I'm forgetful. Anyway, uh, the boy saw me at Fred Meyer. He was walking with his mother. His mother was blonde, just like him. And uh, when he saw me, he said, Mom, Mom. Come, this is my grandma in school. <laughs> A little blonde boy with blue eyes he said I was his grandma. <laughs> I thought that was real cute. I just had to tell you, all of you, about that. I think it, it was cute, cute little blonde boy. Not that I don't have any blonde grandchildren. I have two girls. Uh, it's my daughter's uh, grandchildren. And uh, when her, uh, yeah, her mother went in the hospital to deliver her little sister, and uh, after the baby was born, they were worried. My granddaughter was worried. Oh, she said, I wonder how she'll accept her little sister. And when uh, they were it was in the evening, they were bathing the baby, and then uh, her grandma from Douglas walked in with her. And the nurse said, you want to help bathe your sister? And she, sure, they put a chair by her, and she stood up on there to help bathe the baby. She turned around to her mom, and she said, Mom, I think we'll keep her. <laughs> I thought that was real sweet. 
And now that baby is around, um, she'll be a year on Saturday. And uh, she uh, crawls. When she started crawling, she was at my place. You can't go in the kitchen, it's slippery. And she frowned and put her head down. And, and then after a bit, she lifted up and smiled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I never forget that little girl. <laughs> Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a good evening. Clean AD, exit, you'll get your name. I'm I'm sorry about this, but I have something to say. It's I know it's been a long night, but when earlier this evening when I saw him fall, it hurt. But when I saw him rise again, I had hope, and that shows us how our nation will rise again, how our people will rise how we will stand once again, rise as the sun in the morning rises. We, we, will live again. Let the feathers in your shakyats flow to our people as a river and as a symbol as hope. Dancers, dance for our ancestors that have passed on. Sing loud as you can so they can hear us. And as a way of showing, of saying, we're here. We are here. Young Gary, we're there. Cook.